Welcome to the Motoring Podcast, a Mitsubishi Shogun review special edition. Hello, I'm Alan. Hello, I'm Andrew. Your turn tonight. It is. Mm-hmm. This, one's, this one was with me, funnily enough. So you, uh, so you, uh, at one point earlier in the year, had a Mitsubishi Shogun. Yep, a long wheelbase, uh-huh. 3.2 DI DC SG5 Auto, which, if anyone doesn't know what a Shogun is, one of those big, massive 4x4s, not an SUV, this is a 4x4, those big ones. No, 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 bigger than that, bigger. <laughs> is it shaped like a brick? Yes. Yes, oh, that one, okay. Yes, it's got the the big spare wheel on the back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like quick or off Um So, yes, yeah, so this was a top-of-the-range Shogun. Mm. Right. Uh, That's the SG5 bit, I guess. Yes. Um, and it had 187 horses. Mm-hmm. It came... The one I had came in Eiger Grey, which is metallic grey. Yeah. Uh, which looked wonderful on it, to be fair. Mm-hmm. It was a really good, flattering colour, that was. Um, it's... Is supposed to do 30.4 combined MPG. Um, mm-hmm. I was varying between 23 to 28 in the couple of weeks I had it for. Yeah. Um, in less good news, it's a VD band L. Yes, I, I noticed this in your notes. So do you want to run through the, just run through what that really means to people? So it emits 245 grams per, per kilometre. Oh. Which means, ah, uh, steady yourselves. For the first year, it's going to cost you eight hundred and eighty-five pounds in tax alone. Yeah, you know what? That's more expensive than my Mazda RX-8 was. Yeah, that's um, that's that's, that's a bit of a kicker. But to to be frank, I wasn't surprised because it is a big old school four by four. Well, they've been around for a long as a vehicle it's been around for a long time it must have been the same the same 30, you know, body style years. well the same body style um that that sort of mark 3 shogun that must have been out at least 10 years well the the last time they did some major facelifty stuff was 2012 yeah and, and then that before that i think it was 2006 where yeah. it looks quite similar to the one that looks now how it looks now yeah, so I that was, was when it technology came technology yeah. that was updated in 2012. Mm-hmm. So, well, the 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 one I had cost uh, on the road, brand new, will cost um, forty thousand two hundred and ninety nine of your English pounds mm-hmm. plus six hundred and fifty because of colour tax. Right. Um, and I had a quick shifty before we came on to record this, and typical contract hire leasing is in the region of £700 a month. <laughs> ooh, ooh. But th- these, these uh, from memory, these de- depreciate particularly rapidly. Uh, well, they are almost this, this was a point I was going to make uh, about this. The show, I looked for equivalent vehicles to this. Mm-hmm. And there is nothing within ten to fifteen grand of the competition that is spec the same as this. No. So, so by competition, you're talking Toyota Land Cruiser yeah. is fifteen grand more. Wow. Okay. And I think that is a very good judge against it because otherwise you're looking at Discovery, which is. Um, it's not more made of a luxury. Thing. Well, the new one, the new one is definitely, and it starts at about forty-five well, st- or forty-seven, isn't it? No, the new I one? think they're more than that. Uh, I can't, yeah, it's yeah. I was being that's where, they, that's where they, yeah, that's where they start though. Yeah, that's starting, and, and to and get the equivalent, yeah, top of the range spec, which may not be quite the same. You know, there, there may be more on top for the mm. discovery. So for the money, though, yeah. Well, you're getting a lot of metal to start with. Well, yes, you're getting almost a postcode. Yes, it's <laughs> getting on for that. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming, given that that was the case, given it was, it is, it is big enough, and and all these kind of things, that it was, that was big enough for the for the windscreen horde. I mean, what what did you? 
What did you do with it? Go on. We we left where we live and we drove off to um, uh, Pembrokeshire mm-hmm. for a week and then down to the Gower for a week and back up again to where we live. So it did all a mix of routes, all variety of roads, um, and took away two weeks worth of stuff and it swallowed it with ease. To the point where, you know, the people who've listened to the show will understand, will know that we're a family of five with three young kids and therefore they that entails a lot of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I was able to just pull the luggage cover over the top. Not a problem. Nothing even pushed up into it. Really? There's that's that quite- much space. And that's, but now yours was a seven seater, so I imagine there's not that much space when you're using all the seven seats. Well, I, I was surprised because I did actually have to. There was a there was a short journey that I did need to utilise all seven seats, and I was surprised at how much space there was. Particularly if you got a bit clever with how you pack things. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's nowhere near. You know, you wouldn't think that you're going to take two weeks worth of stuff and use seven seats. Yeah, but for uh, a, a day out or something like that, you could have everybody, you could have bags of wellies and coats and all that stuff, and people would be able to sit there, no problem at all. Mm-hmm. So I, I was very surprised at that. So could, could would it be possible for grown-ups to sit in the back seat, or are they little people? Uh, not really, it's more little people. It's little people. In the, ver- in the very really. back, yeah, in the very mm-hmm. back. Okay. If you think along the lines of the old uh, um, Volvo and Mercedes estate type seats, it's more akin to... It's not that exactly, but it's more akin to that than being a, they're, they're a, very a much, yeah. set of seven seats. Okay, but they, they, they face forward, though, just to, yep, just to double check. Yeah, forward. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um so I imagine most of the time there were just the the, the, the five of you. So for the, yep. the little ones, was there a, how much, I mean, were they, I, I imagine they weren't all squashed together. Well, um, in the back, it was interesting because they, they had to go to quite a bit of effort to start hitting each other. They were that far apart. Okay. Um, which was nice, actually, as a driver. <laughs> And they couldn't, they couldn't kick me in the seat. I was about to say, could they kick the back of your seat? Because I know that's one thing that used <laughs> no, to drive my so that, father So that crazy. was good as well. Um, the 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 floor in there, there was oh, there's just the merest hint of a uh, a tunnel. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's effectively not there. So getting in and out dead easy um, because there was uh, uh, side steps. Mm-hmm. Um, Running the the full length, uh, yeah, the a little bit, of, little bit of chromey blingy. There right. was a few touches of chrome on the exterior, actually, but mm-hmm. not. It wasn't excessive, and it and it actually sat well with the grey. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, what about the uh, inside? Because I've seen some of the pictures, and those, the the leather seats, they they did not look the most practical colour ever. No, uh, if I was specking it myself, I would not have cream leather. <laughs> Um, not with three kids. Not with three kids, because uh, that that would show the marks pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it's leather, it's wipeable, so there is that. Yeah. Um, but I w- I would go for the dark, uh, dark seats. Although having the the cream leather seats and having the cream uh, headliner made it feel really very airy, and it already felt airy because there's lots of glass. Because it, like I mean, this is an old school. I'm truck. going to keep using this phrase, You've got to say truck. And, it, and I and I don't mean it demeaningly either, but it it it, it harkens back to a previous generation of design. There's no let's make the uh, the line of the windows taper up into almost a, a post box slit or anything like that. There's, that is not what they're trying to do with this. It is lots of glass all around, and the one we had had a, a tilt and slide sunroof as well, which really mm-hmm. helped. Um, Make the interior even more cavernous feeling than it already was. Right, yeah. So okay. So what about up? I mean, we've talked about the back uh, a bit. What about up front? Lots of room. Okay. Uh, as as you would imagine, lots of room. Um, but 
you f- you were sitting up exactly phrases it's not sit up and beg no you were you were s- no god god no no i'm not going to use that cliche <laughs> <laughs> no but it wasn't that anyway uh no but you some suvs have you sitting low down this didn't mm-hmm. you sat up and you sat uh in in the commanding position of this vehicle, which is in a very commanding height anyway. So what you mean is instead of... I know what you mean. It's sometimes when you get into into off-roaders of, of various types, and then the Toyota Hilux used to be, be like this, you, you got up, but you actually sat in a very sort of reclined car-like position, despite the fact that you were up in the air. What yeah. you're saying is it, it wasn't that. It was it was at the actual... You know, it was, it was, a, it was a more upright seating position. Your, your knees were... Pretty bent when you were driving. Yeah, you were you were sitting taller up, but having I mean, but that doesn't mean that the seats weren't comfortable. God, they were lovely. They Mm -hmm. were really nice and really comfy. I mean, because we uh, through Britain's lovely roads, the 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 journey down to Pembrokeshire took us nearly uh, twelve hours, Mm -hmm. and nobody was complaining of feeling uncomfortable. Because there was this space and the seats are great, you know, there was people frustrated it was taking so long, but not not that they were uncomfortable. So yeah. the seats were great. And really, they were nice. And there's heated front and back. Okay. Uh, Did you use those much in um, in August? There was a couple of days where they were utilised, to be <laughs> really? fair. Yes. I suppose you are still in the UK. Yeah, of course. Yes. There was, Silly. There was, a cu- there was a couple of days when it was pretty grim, the weather. Mm. So, yes, we did. <laughs> So, so what about the dashboard and stuff and the the instruments? Was that, you know, you said the seating position was comfortable. What was it? What was the rest of that sort of sitting in it experience like? Um, the the dashboard's quite old school again. I mean, I'm going to keep using this phrase, and I'm sorry about that, but that that's the best description for it. It's quite old school. It it does what it says on the tin. That you're not being over endowed with toys to play with or anything like that it is very much uh yes there is a sat nav that that works yeah. now that I, you know i was able to i was able to work out how to get it to work and once i could understand that well, it was th- fine th- this was your second mitsubishi wasn't it so you'd yes. had a bit of a run up by this point yes i had <laughs> yeah. thankfully <The> um, <laughs> but once i could program it which was the major problem the the routes it would take us on and the directions it gave was great. That was no okay. problem at all. That was really nice. And the display was clear and things like that. But it was just getting to that point was tricky if you didn't know. Yeah. Um, it's very functional. Uh, you can see that it's a more utilitarian dashboard. Yeah. Um, and some of the displays were a bit last generation. Mm-hmm. Um, there some of the readouts were red LED and a bit pixelated, oh. um, which that's, that's, that's almost nostalgic. Yeah, that, that's that's what it was. It, it I just went, oh, look at that! Isn't that nice? You know, it's not something that's in this overglossed many colours. It's just no, you, the temperatures in this, you know, in this font, in this. Color, if it were any more old is. school, it would be displaying it on wax tablets. Is what it sounds like. <laughs> it's quite. <laughs> Analog display. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, so we've got this far through talking about the interior, and you haven't told me about any curry hooks yet. All the curry hooks. All really, the, all the no. curry hooks. Well, no, the, there is a lot of curry hooks, <laughs> <laughs> and they are nicely dotted throughout the the, the massive boot. Mm-hmm. So there's some right behind the uh, the rear the rear seats and then there's some that's by the back door um so you know it's it's good use of the space and um, thinking about it they've not just thrown one in and that's it so um yeah no it was that from that point of view and, and i did actually use them i know you okay. scoff but we did use i know them. well if the boot's that big then that's when you really do need to use them yeah yeah um because there wasn't yeah. a cargo net so i didn't want things flying around no no, that makes a that makes a lot of sense. So we've we've focused on the inside, lots. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've said about the outside, and that it's got lots of chromey bits. Uh, anything else particularly 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 worth mentioning about the outside? Did I say it was big? You've mentioned it once or twice. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll think a bit bigger than that. Okay, okay. <laughs> but right. it, to be fair, it was... It, you didn't lose it in a car park. Mm, no. <laughs> it had its plus points, definitely. Um, but it was... How easily gonna, did it... It's going to sound a bit odd, this, but it, I, I thought it was imposing, but not in a mega-aggressive way. So there's a difference between imp- being imposing and being aggressive. Cause yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't, you know, covered in bull bars and spotlights and things like that to, to try and frighten people. But it was, you know, but it was definitely there and you knew it. And only lorries gave way, that we had to give way to. Yeah, I can drove around. I mean, we went, we went through some really narrow roads. We were on motorways and stuff like that. And uh, people could see you, thankfully. Uh, and they got out your way and... What was it like? You know, it was, to, what was it like? You know, on, on those those narrow roads, was it easy enough to tell where the extremities were? I mean, you said it's big, but yeah, I didn't have a problem. Um, okay. uh, one of the features it do, it does have, which was great, was uh, electric folding at the mirrors. Oh. And there was a few times I needed to do that because they were very narrow lanes, mm. and we were meeting tractors and stuff like that. So it was just a quick flick of the switch; they folded in, everyone went past, flick them out again because they they're good big wing mirrors yeah, that give you great visibility backwards it's just one of the things i love i love about driving old school four-wheel drives and stuff is is good proper size wing mirrors yeah there's no silly tapering or anything mm. like that it was it, here is a square of mirror so you can see <laughs> um but if if the cavernous boot an interior was not enough for you the it this does come with roof bars so you can stick a Stick stuff on top as well. Right, you... canoes and other lifestyle stuff, yeah. Uh, I suppose that's yes, you could if you wanted. If you know, if you happen to have passengers and therefore they didn't fit inside. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Without folding the rear seat. Yeah. yeah. So, so how did because this is I mean it it is old school enough that, that it still has a side hinged rear door, doesn't it? Yes, it does, but that um th- this was a clever little uh little thing that they had and we all know that I like a little clever thought out thing it had a plastic stop that you just pushed into place and it meant that the door didn't just swing shut in a bit of bit of a breeze because if it did <laughs> it's a big heavy door because it's got the rear it's got the spare tire on it mm-hmm. you know to the point where you'd be bruised well, it, it, it was a full size and it's a full size spare wheel it's not like yeah yeah I know it's my cross or anything where 20 it's inch it? 20 inch uh, tire so you know, this isn't they're, they're not mucking around no not at all so it, that was a that was a, a simple solution to a problem that, that that was very apparent um but it was a great a great execution of an idea i yeah, thought the, f- the f- first time you park on a hill you're going to know all about that back door aren't you yeah yeah, yeah i mean like we were in the um pembrokeshire in the gower and the, the when we're in the gower, the the wind just never stopped. So having it actually a couple of times, I could hear it push against the stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it, it would have, not been funny, but it would have seriously hurt the kids if it had yeah. shit on them. Yeah, I'm too right. I mean, um, smacking on me is one thing, but on them is a totally different, you know. Yeah, different matter. Uh, you mentioned a tow bar earlier on. I, I guess that was an extra on, on that particular... particular. Uh, no, no, that came... Really, in part of the, it, I've I've scoured specifications and I cannot see how that that is an optional extra. So mm-hmm. um, there's no there's no extra cost for that. So oh right, okay. And it it's if you look sideways on, it sticks out a long way because it's oh, got to get got to clear that rear. beyond the tire and yeah. all that stuff. So. Uh, you know, there, there is a quite a big section of metal sticking out the back. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. Hmm. But I didn't use it. So. Okay. No, no, I would, I'd imagine. I'd imagine not. So, I mean, we've talked all about... We've talked about the inside and the outside and stuff, so what was it like when it was moving along then? Uh, I'm imagining that you were... Um, you were pitching into corners, power sliding, drifting. Oh, I was looking for eight patches that. everywhere. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't sitting there thinking this is a big four by four drive sensibly. 
um, mm. because it's going it's going to do certain things if you don't. Yeah, like there's, all over. there's a bit of body roll because um, we we took the Wiggly route through Wales down, which was I, I've had it confirmed to me was a mistake. Um, <laughs> Who by? Um, Everyone. People. People. <laughs> Right, um, but it actually it, it actually coped with the roads quite well. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it, it isn't a sports car. It isn't an SUV, which is a, you know a, a raised up car these days. It's a proper four by four, um, and but the engine was great. There's so much pull from that engine. Mm-hmm. I, I, to be honest, I thought if I threw a lasso on the moon, I could probably tow that along. <laughs> it just felt like it would never stop going. Yeah, uh, it was one, from that point of view. It was wonderful, and you could see why they're popular with people who need to tow anything. Yes, absolutely. Uh, just amazing, amazing the the, the power that it fe- that it felt like. Um, but it but it did okay. You know, it, I've got a, I've got the car full of the family, so I'm not trying to rush anyway. No, I'm but- not trying to hurtle through corners and stuff. But you do have to appreciate that it is a bigger car, it is a heavier car, so you when you're coming up to roundabouts and stuff like that, you slow down a bit earlier and things like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, with, with that in mind, it did what I expected it to do. Yeah. Driving like a grown up was just fine. Yeah. Yeah. And you adapted yeah. your driving to the, to the vehicle, which is, you kind of have to do with those. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and most of all, you actually enjoy driving it. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, it's been a long time since I got behind the wheel of a car that I just, I was smiling. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not because it made massive noise, although the engine is a bit noisy and it's a bit gruff, but it's a, you know, it's a big diesel. What do you yeah. expect? Uh, again, it, again, it did not surprise me. So there, and nobody complained, nobody was sitting in the car going, it's a bit noisy, isn't it? Or anything like that. There, there was no, no complaints from passengers. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of the driving position and because of the the feeling of that the engine could could do anything, so if I got into any situation, it would be able to help solve that situation. Not that I really went off road with it, but you know, even if I did that, I thought I could I could go anywhere with this. <laughs> I, I could go delusions of grandeur. This. Well, yeah, I, but it made me feel like the king of the road. Mm-hmm. Um. And th- and the family loved it. I mean, they named it within half an hour of us being in the car. Yeah, that's that, that's a sign of something, isn't it? And that's from the kids saying we need to name the car. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's yeah that that means it's it's got straight to the heart of 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 those that yeah straight to the heart of, of absolutely everyone. Uh, we just quickly though, we you, you mentioned the sat nav and stuff before. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other tech that you want to tell us about? Because I know that you're saying, to- other than heated seats, of course. Yes. Well, there was lots of connection ports. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was the glove box, the cubby box. I think there was one on the dashboard. They had them on the back of the cubby box for the rear passengers. There was a 12-volt charging point in the boot. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you all your all your needs will be met. Plus, it had Bluetooth. So, you know, everything you could need was you know those were served for you yeah. and they worked okay um you know it, it's not a it's not a shock to anyone who knows this and and other people have reported this before but in Mitsubishi system isn't the greatest in the world um but i believe it's getting better as they roll out improvements well the new out the rest of the range the new outlander so, has the has the uh uh, the facelifted Outlander has has a major change to the to the entertainment system. I think we mentioned, yeah, and that'll before. filter through. So exactly, but exactly. but it, but it did everything I needed it to do. I wasn't asking it to do anything it couldn't do. So. Mm-hmm. You um, said to me before, by the way, that it had park, that it had rear view camera and stuff. We haven't mentioned that. It's probably just worth saying that with that big yes wheel on the absolutely. back, absolutely. Um, and the rear parking sensors were very cleverly positioned because they're in the rear tire cover, all right, the spare tire cover, sorry, as well as the bumpers. Mm-hmm. So you are getting the foot because. My worry when I saw them in the bumpers, I thought, oh god, you know. But then there's another so many inches of tire. Mm-hmm. In this cover, I don't want to 
bang that. But then I, I, as I walked around, I could see they were in there. And you could get really close to stuff. And the camera was great. The camera was a big, big help. And I know there's going to be people going, well, if you can't reverse then then you shouldn't be driving it. Oh, yeah. I could reverse it. It made it so much easier to have this stuff. Mm-hmm. That's that's the difference. It made it much simpler because it is such a big vehicle. Um, that you know, why not use it if it's there and it's fitted? Why not use it? Yeah, I agree totally. Yeah, well, you're never going to get me. You're never going to get me disagreeing when it comes to throwing more, th- throwing more, more useful tech at stuff. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so any sort of final verdict? Covered quite a few aspects well, there. It's. It's not an SUV, okay? There's there's no pretense at car-like handling or any stuff like that. It's not that. So if that's what you're after, this is not the vehicle for you. Buy an X6. Yeah. <laughs> so then we can mock you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I said mock. Yes. yes. Um, there's, if you want acres of room, perfect. It's really quite decently comfortable as well. Um. I think because it is old school, I think that helps with it. it. You know, and there is a bit of body lean and stuff like that. And I think that aid, that adds to the comfort. And, you know, it's got proper tyres. You know, it's no, there's no low-profile nonsense there. On 20-inch rims! <laughs> I mean, this isn't for everyone. This car is not for everyone because there's things like the size is imposing. I know Mrs. Crack Windscreen would never drive it because it's too big for her. Um, you, the, you never know. If you let her do it once or twice, I think she'd probably fall in love with it. Um, she really enjoyed the being in it mm-hmm. and the way that people would get out of your way and the way that people <laughs> would... Well, it, and, and I don't mean dive into ditches, but I mean they would respect <laughs> they would respect you and the vehicle. Whereas <laughs> if you were in a normal car, they'd perhaps rush by a bit more. Mm-hmm. So... That was and the and the visibility. I mean, we've talked about it before when we've reviewed SUVs that you can see the plus points of of uh, raised ride height gives you yep. visibility. But in this one, you were higher again. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were properly high. Um, I mean, there's other things like the the running costs uh, from tax and fuel bills. Although the fuel was better than I was anticipating, so um, you know that wasn't a, too much of a shock for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not going to you know, it's not 50 miles to the gallon. It's not, it's never going to be that. So, no. uh, but if you, if, if I lived in the countryside and I needed a four by four. For towing and stuff. Just if I wanted a big four by four. Oh, right. Well, okay. So it it not necessarily mean. to tow, but if I just wanted a big four by four, um, and I had, and I was looking to buy new, nothing, as I said before, nothing comes close on the price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I would happily then keep that for years, so that that becomes so any depreciation doesn't matter. Yeah, and it should you know to Mitsubishi, it should last. It should last pretty well. Yeah, I mean you're talking twelve every twelve thousand miles it's service, so it's not every six months or anything. No, okay, well, so yeah, that's pretty good actually for for, for that kind of. That kind but of if I, if I had the cash, I'd go out and buy one tomorrow. You really like this? Oh, I've it. it I love this. I love this uh, to the point where I was looking uh, on uh, places where we could move, so I wouldn't have to return it to Mister Bishy at the end of the two weeks. It was I was getting messages about how much he liked this. It's the, oh, I think it's probably about the only press car you've had so far where I, I kept getting messages saying, "I really don't want to hand this back. I really like this. This is really good. I really like this." It, it just so, felt so special, and, it's, and like I say, it's not due to speed or anything like that, or how it looked. I just felt special in it, and it made me smile. And every everybody in the family loved it. Everybody, mm-hmm. nobody had any criticisms for it. Cool. And I don't think you can say much higher than that. So that's a, that's a definite win for the uh, for the Shogun. Mm. I'd say. Yep. Any other last requests? Um, well, apart from I'd like one for six months. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no there isn't. <laughs> well, I think we'll round up on, on, uh, at that point then. Um, 
So, folks, don't forget that between now and next time, uh, you can give us any feedback and share your thoughts with the show at Motoring Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook, and on the contact page of motoringpodcast.com, the hub of all our activities. Don't forget to leave a review and rating on iTunes or however your podcast app lets you do such a thing. It really does matter. Andrew, now that you're suffering with from shogun withdrawal symptoms, what's the best way for folk to get in touch with you? Uh, the best way would be via Twitter. If you search for Crap Windscreen, you will find me there. Uh, and if people want to get in touch with you, Alan, what's the best way? Uh, Twitter again. I'm at AJP Bradley. Uh, Andrew will be uh, <laughs> Andrew will be will be at- attending the next meeting of of. Uh, of 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 wishing their show gun owner anonymous, uh, but until then, <laughs> we'll be back soon. Uh, I've been Alan Bradley. I've been Andrew Clues, and safe motoring. <laughs>